this time on Huckleberry Adventure, I'm hiking a section of the Appalachian Trail in Virginia, known for what's called the trifecta. And I have with me my hiking buddy, goes by the name of Bootman when he's on the trail. Bootman, tell us how you got that name. Back in 2005, you and I were hiking with another friend of ours whose uh, hiking trail name is Half-Life. And as we were going, the bottom of my boot actually separated from the rest of the boot. Not a good day. Not a good day. <laughs> I had some duct tape and I used that to wrap it up and try to keep going, but didn't that have looked, that much. That looked a little comical to the other hikers. It did. We were in a bubble that, that, that week, right? We were. So they said, hey, boot man. Yeah. All right. It's stuck. So, yeah. So, of course, on the Appalachian Trail, most folks have a trail name. and. Of course, mine is Huckleberry, or Huck for short, and uh, Bootman and I have been getting together once uh, a year in the summer, if we can get a week uh, where our schedules line up. Most summers we get together and do a section of the Appalachian Trail, and that started over 20 years ago in the Great Smokies, and uh, we would do sections of the Smokies, and uh, we link those together. Um, but then we went on this trip with Half-Life in central Virginia and did a huge portion around the Priest uh, Mountain, crossed the James River on the footbridge and uh, did about uh, 89 miles or so in that area. And then we kind of got the bug uh, to do a little more. So we started back at uh, Springer Mountain, Georgia and started filling the gap from there up to the Great Smokies. And then after that, from the eastern side of the Great Smokies, up to where we had been with Half-Life. And this particular hike is significant uh, for what other reason? This will be the longest that we have done in a single trip. It'll be 94 miles. But not bad for two guys in their 60s. So for those of you that are laughing, <laughs> keep that in mind, okay? And uh, we also are finally filling that gap. And so w once we finish this uh, hike, hopefully today or tomorrow, and we finish those 94 miles, uh, we will have continuous miles from Springer Mountain, Georgia to uh, almost to the Shenandoah National Park. And so for us, that's pretty significant. Just doing it one week uh, a year in the summer, in those summers where we could make it. And uh, so it, that's been a, a real accomplishment for us. We feel pretty good about that. We might have to change our names to Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2. Because it took half our lives to get this far. So we're at about 850 miles or so of the Appalachian Trail and uh, have really enjoyed this particular hike. Tell us a little bit about the trifecta. What's meant by the trifecta? The trifecta refers to three fabulous uh, scenic areas. So the first one was Dragon's Tooth. Mm. That was great. And uh, we went down there, paid a visit, able to climb up onto the tooth a little bit, mm -hmm. got some wonderful shots of that. That was great fun. That was amazing. And almost got caught in a terrible rainstorm. Uh, we did, but we got down off of the, the rocks before that rainstorm really hit us. And uh, um, the next part of the trifecta is the most photographed location on the Appalachian Trail. It's McAfee Knob. Yeah, every that. book I've ever seen on the Appalachian Trail has a picture of somebody on McAfee Knob. So it was great to be there. What did you think of that? That was fabulous. The, uh, the little hangover, we tried to get as close as we could to the edge to get a picture. Uh, we, we actually communicated by video with our wives mm -hmm. uh, individually, and each one of them said they didn't like us being there. They didn't want to watch. They, yep. We had them on FaceTime and they didn't <laughs> want to watch us walking up to that edge, but uh, we were safe there and uh, really enjoyed it. And then the third part of the trifecta. And uh, you give the name of that one. Uh, I always have the problem. I think it's Tinker... Tinker Cliffs. Cliffs, Cliffs, yeah. And uh, I didn't know much about that. I'd heard about the other two before. And it was absolutely as spectacular uh, as the other two. No question. I think a unique part about that, it wasn't a single point. Mm, right. It lasted for about a half a mile, and there was just ledge after ledge, view after view. And, and the remember. Appalachian Trail is literally on this ledge for that half a mile. And uh, that was incredible. It was. Yeah, you get, you get so used to walking in the green tunnel to have these kind of views all in one section. It's just been a tremendous week. And uh, 
lots of wildlife. We haven't seen any bear, but boy, did we see some deer. Tell us about the time we saw the buck. That was fun. You had stopped on the trail, and you were looking. As I was walking up, since I saw you stop, I looked to see what you were looking at. And I saw three deer just off the trail. And then you said, look, there's a lake over there. And I thought, well, I'm surprised you're talking about a lake when there are three deer. And you looked and said, oh, I didn't three. See, I didn't see those deer at all. They didn't move. They were blending in with the leaves. And, this, and they were right there. And we could have walked right by them, never known. Then I noticed there's a fourth deer. And there's a fifth deer. And then I looked over to the side, and we saw a buck, an eight-point buck. Yeah. And he just very carefully uh, ushered his ladies away from us, uh, but they weren't too frightened. They, uh, yeah, it was amazing. Obviously, they have seen hikers before. I think so. <laughs> and and fortunately, hikers are great people. Yeah, they are. And we've had some great experiences on the trail, uh, working with folks and helping them out, and lots of folks that helped us out, and uh, we really enjoyed that. It's been a great week. A first for us was to change somebody's tire on the Appalachian Trail. On the Trail. Appalachian Trail, yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, we were crossing the road, and we heard a strange sound. And this car was coming, and uh, this lady had a rental car, and she had a blowout, and she did not change the tire. And we changed the tire on the Appalachian Trail. So not too many people can say that. That's right. Yeah. So I uh, look forward to showing to you a number of our photographs and videos. So... Uh, that's coming right now. Thanks for being with us. This year, we hiked a total of 94 miles in the Blacksburg and Roanoke areas. We hiked from mile marker 664 to mile marker 758. And this closed the gap between where we left off in 2023 and the hike that we did way back in 2005. We began our hike in the late afternoon, starting from where we parked our vehicle on Mountain Lake Road. We had to make it five miles to Warspur Shelter, but it poured down rain on us all along the way. Next morning, things began to brighten up. And by noontime, we found a rock where we could dry out our things and sun ourselves. And we weren't the only ones sunning ourselves. Bootman found a garter snake there as well. In addition to the garter snake, we saw many other animals, including fence lizards and beautiful orange salamanders that lived at the top of the ridge. We came across two different box turtles on the trail. We saw a black buzzard at the top of Tinker Cliff and some beautiful luna moths. Oh. And of course, we saw more deer than we could count. Sometimes, between mountain ranges, the Appalachian Trail would pass through a farmer's field we enjoyed the change of scenery and the beautiful vistas. At the edge of one farmer's field, we found Kefir Oak. Kefir Oak has a circumference of over 18 feet and is the largest oak tree on the Southern Appalachian Trail. This year, we made cozies for our pots so we could eat more than freeze-dried foods and still conserve fuel. In order to prevent problems with bears and other animals, we would always hang our food from a tree that was a long way from our tents or shelter. Nice shot. filtered water from streams and springs for cooking and drinking. We spent a total of nine nights on the trail. Three nights we spent in shelters, and four nights we spent camped out in the woods in our tents. 
We also spent a night at the Four Pines Hostel and at the Super 8 Hotel. Virginia's Triple Crown on the Appalachian Trail consists of Dragon's Tooth, McAfee Knob, and Tinker Cliffs. We met a hiker on the trail who referred to these three areas as the Trifecta. That name stuck with us for a while till we later found out they're commonly called the Triple Crown. At Dragon's Tooth, you see a giant rock that looks like a fang, and next to that, another rock that could be the dragon's molar teeth. In order to climb to the top of Dragon's Tooth, you'll find a boulder that's wedged between two rocks. You crawl underneath the boulder and then pull yourself up towards the top of the tooth. It's quite the mountain climb. Everybody's surfing now. Continuing northbound from Dragon's Tooth required us to climb down rock faces for nearly a mile. It has been said that McAfee Knob is the most photographed spot on the entire Appalachian Trail. It's easy to see why. The morning we set off for McAfee Knob, it was foggy and rainy, but by the time we got there, it had cleared enough to produce these fabulous photos. Of course, most of the photos at McAfee Knob are of the hiker standing on the ledge. Here's a photo of what the hiker sees. Here's a photo of McAfee Knob from the other angle. You know, I've never been to a restaurant with a better view than this. Bootman pointed out small pools of water found all over McAfee Knob. He explained that rainwater naturally contains a small amount of carbonic acid, and that helps to chemically break down the molecules of the rock through hydrolysis and dissolution. Over many years, the small holes get bigger, creating this karst topography on the surface of McAfee Knob. On the way to Tinker Cliffs, we saw and climbed many rock formations. Tinker Cliffs extends for nearly a half mile along the Appalachian Trail, and when you first reach it, traveling northbound, it looks like this.
Hiking past Tinker Cliffs, we took turns playing the part of Atlas. As we continued northbound towards Daleville, we had many beautiful views of Carvin's Cove Reservoir, which provides the fresh water for the city of Roanoke and the surrounding communities. Once we reached Daleville, we ate at the Three Little Pigs Barbecue, we resupplied at the Kroger and the Outdoor Trails, and we spent the night at Super 8. The next morning, we enjoyed our complimentary breakfast and then waited for a shuttle to take us to Jennings Creek Bridge so that we could complete our hike. From Jennings Creek, we made the hike southbound back to Daleville. It was in this section that we met our new friend Judy, who gave us a cucumber for helping her change her tire. Along this route, the Appalachian Trail intersects with the Blue Ridge Parkway in several locations. At Harvey's Knob Overlook, a family that was traveling the Blue Ridge Parkway gave us an apple and some Gatorade. That evening, we viewed a beautiful sunset. And warmed ourselves by the campfire before getting a good night's rest. In many areas along the trail, we found blackberry bushes the sweetest of which were near Troutville. Homer and Teresa were our shuttle drivers, and we ran across them as we entered Daleville again. They were mowing the Appalachian Trail. We closed the gap. We did it. We hiked a total of 94 miles, 66 northbound to Daleville, and 28 miles southbound back to Daleville. This completed the gap, and we now have hiked 845 miles north of Springer Mountain, Georgia. And just say something else. Okay, say something else. <laughs> That's a cut. Okay. Take one. One take. That's beautiful. Do you think that's good enough? I hope the camera's still running. <laughs>